Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about what was supposed to be a 31st October special so what I, what I had arranged with you was that uh, through the month of October I would post videos every Wednesday and Sunday and so I did that but last week, uh, it was on Friday, the internet in my house uh, broke down, I don't know why, and we called our server and they didn't know why either. And so it was scheduled for a technician come to my house uh, in Wednesday, in last Wednesday, and so he did. And then he arranged things and the internet came back. But so I was without internet through last weekend and a few days in the beginning of this week. <sighs> and so I couldn't post last weekend on Sunday when I was supposed to. So on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, I posted The Phantom of the Opera. That was the last novel and the last a review that I had to make for my horror month. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go check The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. That was my first video of the horror month. So there I explain everything that you need to know about the month of October. But so I'm sorry for that, but I I really didn't have internet so I couldn't post and it was supposed to be a surprise to have an extra video in 31st of October so commemorating the day of Halloween that was my idea and that was I wanted what I wanted to do and if you don't follow me on Instagram please do so because there is where I uh, warn you about this type of thing. So last weekend I posted on stories uh, warning you about my lack of internet in my house and uh, why I wouldn't post on Sunday. And so because right now as I don't have 500 subscribers on YouTube, I don't have the community app. So I can't warn you through YouTube, so if you please uh, follow me on Instagram so you can be uh, up to date uh, of what's going on with me and uh, if something like this ever happens again, I will warn you, warn you through Instagram, mostly Instagram stories. So is underscore books underscore doodles underscore so you can search for me there and well be updated with my posts and updated with warnings like this and so if you follow me on goodreads you maybe have saw the book that i'm going to talk to you today it was supposed to be a surprise. I'm trying to find books that talk about other books or talk about the horror genre that are more like different, not so much a book with a plot and a story, but books about the behind the scenes, the um, inspirations of authors. So I'm trying to pick up suggestions and if you do have them please let me know in the comments so I can keep them for next uh, for future years through um, this October through the month of October so I can uh, post a special video on 31st of October so that's so for you to know that's my idea. Every year in the month of, or the horror month, 
I will post a special video on the 31st of October to commemorate Halloween. And so I had posted a story on my Instagram with a bit of the cover of the book that I'm going to talk today and I was sprinkling um, a clue of what the book was and no one responds to me responded to me so I was a bit sad so no one cared <laughs> but you know I have so few followers it's normal but I was hoping that someone would say the book that I was reading and guess guessed it but that didn't happen and so if you follow me on Goodreads you probably know which book and if you saw it right you probably know which book I'm talking about and so to end the suspense I'm talking about Dance Macabre by Stephen King so I first saw this book in another um, youtuber channel uh, I talked about her here already and she is my first inspiration for everything related to books and reading and she was my inspiration for the horror month it was through her channel and through her idea that I created this project in my channel so everything is because of her and I'm talking about Tatiana Feltrin you have in the description the link to, uh, to her channel so please go check her out she is a Brazilian booktuber so, so she talks in Portuguese and she, has, she hasn't had subtitles but if you do speak Portuguese I think you will enjoy her channel so please go check her out if you do speak or, do, or you understand Portuguese you know what I mean so this book is a non-fiction book this was published in 1981 so it's an oldie but this is a book about the horror genre so the idea through this book came uh, to um, from um, old publisher or editor of Stephen King uh, and at the time Stephen King had changed publishers so he wasn't working with this person anymore but they were close friends and so they were still talking and this editor came with the idea of creating a book that talked about the horror genre from the last 30 years so he gave this task to Stephen King so he proposed to King for he to create this and write this book and so he did and that's how this book was born uh, and in here we have comp a compilation of other work works not works but articles that Stephen King has written to uh, magazines and to I know, don't know if newspapers I don't think so I think it's ju just magazines so he had written in the past some articles about the horror genre that he so much loves right and uh, which his work is all about he because he says that in the ending in the afterwards of this book so I didn't know right so I'm from 1992 so many references that he gives in this book I have no idea what they are like about books about movies about radio shows about um, television programs about um, directors cinematic directors so many things that he references in, in this book 
I don't know about and I never heard even some things yes I did have heard through other youtubers or other books but uh, the majority of the references that Stephen King does in this book for me it was all new and I didn't know anything about it so what ha we have here we have him starting to present this is not so much a memoir it has some sprinkles of Stephen King's life mainly in the beginning of the book uh, where he explains how he came to um, contact with the horror genre like through movies first of all he talks about his experience of seeing his first horror movie and how it was thrilling to him and how he fell in love right there um, and he even tells a story about how he was in the, in the theater with his friends and a technician of the cinema stopped the movie and came to the front of the audience and told that the Russians had launched a um, spaceship to the space and so they were winning the space war <laughs> and they were like gri gri like who cares because they were teenagers at the time so and he then went away and the movie uh, went on so particular stories like this that he tells us really funny and really interesting uh, and you know through the lens of the time then he goes to so in chapter 3 it's uh, that is called tales of the tarot he talks about three books so he talks about dr jekyll and mr hyde that i have read he talks about Frankenstein and he talks about the turn of the screw that I have read as well Frankenstein I didn't so something uh, that I should warn you you should read these three books before you pick this one up because it's not like he gives spoilers or anything but he talks a bit freely about the plot of these books so and not so, so, and not only about these books there he in here there he talks about other books that he gives a bit of the story so if you don't want to know anything and go to your reading with blind eyes i think you should read these books at least these three books first and then pick this one up so he oh and also he here in here he also talks about Dracula that I have read as well and I think you should read it before you pick this one up too um, and something interesting is that he does some comments in here about Dracula that I didn't have pick up when I first read the book so it was interesting to see how some things um, go through you and you don't pick them up at all you don't see them so it's a bit bizarre and of course Dracula if I'm not mistaken is a Victorian book so you couldn't be explicit in your descriptions at the time and that's what Stephen King explains in here um, the nuances that the descriptions of that book have that meaning other things do you know what I mean I hope so yeah and I was completely off I didn't pick them up at all um, so it was really interesting to read this book because of that because he 
comment some things about these books and even about our Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, it was also interesting to read some things that he says in here about that book in particular. It's so small, but at the same time, it's so packed. And yeah, I think the, well, Frankenstein, The Turn of the Screw, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dracula, and others that I'm going to reference further on, I think you should read first and then pick this up. Because, for example, Frankenstein, he talks about it, but I, I haven't read it. So he comments some things in here that I took from the context and I understood what he meant. But as I haven't read the book, maybe the meaning and the um, comments that he did weren't so profound as they should be. So please read them first. Then he goes on to talk about some movies or at least books that become movies that turn out to movies. He even talks about his own works like Carrie, The Sand, uh, The Shining. So he at the time had written those books and those books were turn out uh, turn to movies so he uh, in 1981 had already some fame so he wasn't a newbie in the business um, and I suppose that's why he was invited to read to write this book right um, and he goes on to talk about movies like Rosemary's Baby The Exorcist so books that he enjoys and thinks that are references in the in the genre. He also talks a lot about who who was it? Ray Bradbury, right? That's his name. I think I'm not wrong. He talks about him a lot in this book, throughout the book. Um, and at the time he was still publishing a lot. And he also talks about Richard Madsen, like the other author of um, The Legend. Is it The Legend, right? I think it is. And I have read the, this, uh, that, uh, that book as well, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm very curious to read other works and other books by Richard Madsen. So he talks about him a lot as well. And then he talks about um, TV programs. So TV programs that I didn't see because they are old. <laughs> I'm not calling Stephen King old, but you know, I'm 30. So, and this is from 1980. This is 10 years before I was born. And he's talking about 30 years prior to 1980. So. The references to me say nothing, right? They mean nothing to me because I don't know them. I never saw it. I could have saw it, but, or watch it, I'm sorry, watch it, but I didn't. So I have no knowledge about the matter. So it talks about the Twilight Zone. So this was supposed to be a very famous um, horror program science fiction so it was a mixture if i'm not if if i understood right it was a program with uh, various episodes and in each episode it, it would um, bring a different horror story so horror mystery death he doesn't talk about so well about this tv program so he doesn't think it was that outstanding he well he didn't enjoy it that's the point he's making um, and he preferred the outer limits so it, this was supposed to be a science fiction program and he also talked about thriller another program 
and even references Alfred Hitchcock presents. I heard a lot about, about this one. Tatiana Feltring talks a lot about Alfred Hitchcock presents. This was supposed to be a brilliant program. I never seen any episode, so I have no idea. But this is the references that he makes in this book and he talks a lot about this uh, in some chapters. And then he goes on to talk about some movies like The Shining that he wasn't a fan of. The Shining was a book by Stephen King and a book turned to a movie. But Stephen King wasn't a fan of the movie. But he doesn't talk uh, too much about it in this book. So he comments briefly, but not too much. And then he talks about radio shows, how his family, his mother and his brother and himself would listen to radio shows of uh, horror stories. So actors... Um, acting on radio, right, only through their voices, stories of horror and how it was thrilling to him and how he enjoys listening to that shows and to those shows and how that was a bit lost in through time. So radio doesn't have the impact that has now. He explains that we now, um, in, uh, the audience imposes a visual entry to the, um, not only horror, horror genre, but through a general perspective in what times we are and at the time in 1980. So the movies have ev ev um, evoluted very much even at the time and so at the time radio wasn't so much um, a thing as it was 20 years ago or 20 years prior and so but you know for him for Stephen King radio in his childhood was very still um, a source of wonder and he talks about many radio shows in this book as well and that were a reference to him and he also talks about how his mother and his family in general would tell horror stories or about ghosts that they saw or about something that happened to someone that was strange and so that type of experience, human experiences that were shared through families and even makes a quiz uh, during the, the book where he describes the plot of a movie and you have to um, guess the title of the movie. <laughs> I didn't guess any of those because... I didn't recognize any of those. I, I also have to say that I'm not a big fan of horror movies, so I can talk too much. I saw a few of them. I can count it in my hand how many horror mov movies I saw in my life. So, you know, and even if we're talking about uh, years prior to 1980, even fewer or even fewer no none <laughs> i saw or i watched so yeah i don't have references to almost anything in this book in terms of cinema and radio shows and tv programs so i have some references as i as i've told you about books some books i have read so I can read this book and understand some comments that he does. But um, in, ex in exception of that, I don't know any, any reference that he talks about in here. 
Well, something I have to say. I really enjoyed the first part of this book. I was loving it. I was reading it. I was devouring it. It was wonderful. I really loved how he um, mixed a bit about his own experience as a child. So his references and his uh, experience as a writer of the genre. I really enjoyed that. But the... Well, the, I'm going to part this in three. So the third part of this book, like through the ending, I finished this book today, so you can have an idea. So even if I did, did have internet in my house, I, I wasn't able, I wouldn't be able to post this video on the 31st. Well, that's a given with me. I can't finish a book in a date that I schedule ever. Well, as I was saying, focus. I was enjoying it, but through the last pages, well, the last 100 pages of this book was a martyr, was a torture. I wasn't enjoying it. It was a bit boring because the references and the things that he was talking about, I had no idea what, what, what he was talking about and I didn't have interest in it. So I have to say that I was a bit tired by the end. So if you're my age or younger, maybe you will feel the same if you don't have these references. So if you didn't saw the TV shows or the movies that it is talking about, or if, even if you don't know the authors that he's talking about, that was something else that I have to say that I didn't know. Um, you be a bit bored through the end of this book. But you know, that didn't took anything from the experience of reading it. I still overall enjoyed it and I would recommend you to read it. I think it, it has some things that are interesting. So don't be deterred by what I'm saying right now. I think in the end you will enjoy reading this book. And the, the writing of Stephen King is really easy, really fluid, really easy to read. Yeah, e so this is an English edition because uh, we don't have a translation in Portugal. Uh, and I read it in English. And it was really easy for me to understand. It was really accessible. So I think you will enjoy it too, even if you don't speak English or the, uh, if, if you don't speak English. If English is not your first language, I think you will understand very easily what Stephen King wrote. And it's a really good way for you to train and um, train your English, right? Ah, there's a book in here that he references a lot that is called Ghost Story by Peter Strauss. So, um, I'm a bit divided if I should read it because my favorite YouTuber, as I said, Tatiana Feltrin, she has read it and she made a video about this book and she didn't like it. <laughs> and so I'm a bit... Uh, is it worth it? Because Stephen King talks a, a lot about this book in, in here. And he says that he really enjoyed it and that it was a brilliant work and so on and so forth. And he really, he really praises this book. And so I'm curious to read it, but Tatiana Feltrin told us that it was a bit slow paced and really, and, and that nothing really did happen in the end. So mm, I'm not sure if I should, we should trust on Stephen King's tastes, you know? And yeah, I don't know, but of course I will read it to know for myself. So yeah, Dance Macabre is um, a really fun voyage through many references about horror, the horror genre. 
um, through very medias, books, TV, movies, radio. So you have it all in here. And even if you want to go back and re uh, watch um, old uh, programs, such as The Twilight Zone, for example, I think this has references in here that are worth picking up as there are many references of books as well so in the at the end of this book we have appendix one that, that talks about the films and in here we have i think it's 100 yes well, he says roughly 100 fantasy horror films tied together by their time and their excellence. So, through the years of 1950 and 1980, and all of them seem to, to me, so to Stephen King, particularly interesting in one way or another. All of them have contributed something of value to the genre. And he has an asterisk on those that are his favorites, as you can see in this example. So you have Appendix 1, that's the films. And then you have Appendix 2, that's the books. That are also 100 bo books that he thought or he thinks that contributed for the genre, the horror genre. And he had the help of Kirby Macaulay, who helped with the list. And he as well has asterisks on those that are his favorites. So this is a reference that will stay with me because I have the copy of the book. So I will select some movies and some books that uh, I want to see or watch and read and maybe I, I took references in here for the next horror month, next years and po posthumous years, right? Not posthumous, following! <laughs> Jesus! From following years, so that's always a plus, right? And then uh, uh, the very end you have an index where you have all the references to the movies and radio shows and TV series um, that he references. So you have here everything that he talked about as you can see. So it it goes on, it takes a lot, a big chunk, well, a little chunk, but you know, a good chunk of the end of the book. So that's really interesting as well. So if you want to, if you don't remember where you read some thing or some reference, you can go to the index and you f will find it. So that's really helpful. So in general, I really enjoyed reading this. As I've said, if you are my age, around, if you were born at 90s, in the 90s, um, and um, after that, maybe you will not know many of the references that Stephen King does in here. But still, I think it is a really interesting book for you to pick up. Um, it's always good to have references, even if they are old, because old doesn't mean low quality. Sometimes it even means the contrary. So we have to honor those references. And yeah, I think you will really enjoyed it. So even though I'm a bit late to the game and I didn't post when I wanted and I didn't end up reading when I wanted, I hope you still give this book and this video a chance. Please watch it. So, 
and please go check this one out. So I'm considering to pick, uh, pick up, so what I wanted to say was I haven't read any books of um, Stephen King, of fiction Stephen King, books of fiction. So I only have read before this one, before this one, I have read on writing that I really also enjoyed and I really would advise you to pick that uh, book up. So that book was written, I think, 90 years after this one. And this one is like uh, an introduction in some way to that book on writing. Uh, on that book, that is really talking about like um, a small memoir of Stephen King and then um, a talk about the um, work of a writer. So really, really interesting. I really enjoy that one and I'm really eager to pick books of fiction by Stephen King and I'm considering to beginning reading Stephen King by chronological order. So beginning with his first published book till the last published book by him. Because they say that Stephen King has a um, cosmos that is uh, common to every every single one of his books so every single book has a bit of the book before him you know what I mean so if you know him you know what I'm talking about but that's why I'm considering to reading in chronological order so I can pick those references in his books so I will start with Carrie that was his first published book what I don't know is if I'm going to pick Carrie just in the next October, so for the horror month, or if I'm going to pick up it before that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And that also depends on my schedule. So we will see. But so you know uh, what I'm considering, regarding Stephen King that's my idea please let me know if you have read anything by Stephen King or if you only have read the non-fiction like me and if you have read the fiction what type of order did you take did you just pick randomly or are you going chronological chronologically look like, like I was saying so let me know and yeah Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one. Bye!